humbled by the invitation to uh, be a part of this Southwestern uh, Christian College lectureship. Uh, and I appreciate the lectureship committee and want to commend uh, Dr. Seamster and his team for the fine work that they are doing here uh, at Southwestern Christian College. Uh, it is especially humbling considering the fact that uh, I did not go to Southwestern uh, Christian College, but uh, I can say that I've given more money to Southwestern than any of the schools that I went to. And so Southwestern uh, does have a special place in my heart and uh, those men who have touched my life through ministry uh, have come through Southwestern. Uh, and so it is just a blessing to be here uh, on this evening. It's good to uh, have some Marcellus members in the house uh, on tonight. Uh, they are some ride or dies uh, to uh, have been uh, there this morning and come here on uh, this evening, and uh, we appreciate them. Uh, and whenever I preach this sermon at Marcellus, act like you haven't heard it before. Uh, the uh, text that I've been given, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Uh, we will start at verse number 21 through 24, and then we'll drop down to verse number 35. Mark chapter 5. Uh, we'll kick off from verse number uh, 21. When Jesus had crossed over again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and so he stayed by the seashore. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up, and on seeing him fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she will get well and live. And he went off with him, and a large crowd was following him and pressing in on him. Uh, if you drop down to verse number 35, there the Bible says, While he was still speaking, they came from the house of the synagogue officials saying, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher anymore? But Jesus, overhearing what was being spoken, said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, only believe. Uh, and he allowed no one to accompany him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the synagogue official, and he saw a commotion and people loudly weeping and wailing. And entering in, he said to them, why make a commotion and weep? The child has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him, but putting them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and his own companions and entered the room where the child was. Taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which translated means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began to walk, for she was 12 years old. And immediately, they were completely astounded. And he gave them strict orders that no one should know about this. And he said that something should be given her to eat. Uh, anchored in the Lord is the tag for this text that has been given. I want to uh, subtitle this message, Desperate Faith. 
a desperate faith, anchored in the Lord, desperate faith. No matter who we are or what we do, there are some problems in life that we just can't fix. Uh, there are some things that happen in our lives that are above our pay grade. Uh, this man named Jairus uh, is a synagogue official. And he finds himself in a position that no parent ever wants to be in. Uh, his daughter, his baby girl, is so sick that if she doesn't have a miracle. Uh, she's going to die. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's powerless. Uh, she is sick to the point of death, and there is absolutely nothing that Jairus can do about it. Uh, and he's a synagogue official. He spent his time serving in the house of the Lord. He was responsible for setting the order of service for Sabbath worship. Uh, he's the one that would procure the scrolls that were read in the synagogue. Uh, he would examine the messages of the speakers in the synagogue to make sure that they were sound and that all things were done with decency and dignity. Uh, Jairus was a vital part of the religious community. He is part of the social fabric of society. But in this moment, none of that matters. Uh, in this moment, he's not Jairus, the synagogue official. In this moment, he's Jairus, the dad of a dying 12-year-old girl. And in this hour, he is helpless. And in his helplessness, he decides, I need to go see Jesus. Uh, as a synagogue official, Jairus would have uh, been familiar with Jesus because Jesus was a regular at the synagogue. And perhaps Jairus had heard Jesus teach before. Maybe Jairus had seen Jesus heal other people. And he just figured, since there's nothing that I can do, maybe Jesus can do something for my daughter. Jairus doesn't come to Jesus on official synagogue business. He doesn't come to Jesus as a man of dignity and distinction. He comes to Jesus as a desperate dad with a dying daughter. He falls at the feet of Jesus, this synagogue official, this man of dignity and distinction falls down at the feet of another man and repeatedly begs Jesus, please come to my house and lay hands on my daughter so that she may get well and live. Uh, I want her to get well and live. Uh, I'm not just asking you to give her a few more days. I'm asking that, that you will bless her so that she can have both quality of life and length of days. I'm not asking you to give her a reasonable portion. I want you to bless her with life so she can live life and have life in abundance. Jesus, the only hope my child has is for you to heal her. The only way that she is going to live is that if you do for my daughter what I've seen you do for many others. Lord, I, I know you can. I'm begging you that you will. See, there, there are times in life when our formalities just won't work. There are times when even those who serve in the house of the Lord and minister to the people of God have to fall on our knees at the feet of Jesus. There are times when preacher swag just won't 
get it. There are times when praying in the eloquence of the King James just won't cut it. There are times when dignity and distinction give way to desperation and despair. I'm not coming to Jesus as the ministering evangelist. I'm not coming to Jesus as a preacher. I'm not coming to Jesus as a pastor teacher. I'm not coming to him as a bishop in the Lord's church. I'm not coming to him as a deacon. Forget my ministry leader, leader title. Forget the fact that I teach Bible class. In this moment, none of that matters. I'm coming to Jesus as a father who doesn't know where his child is. I'm coming to Jesus as a husband with a wife who feels unloved. I'm coming to Jesus as a brother who hasn't spoken to his sibling in years. I'm coming to Jesus as a son who's dealing with aging parents. I'm coming to Jesus begging you, Lord, please touch my family because the only way we gonna get well and live is for you to touch them. And so Jesus says, I'll go with you, Jairus. And they head towards Jairus' house. But before they can get away, their arrival, their travel is interrupted. Because on their way, a woman with an issue of blood touches Jesus with a faith touch and is healed. And Jesus is dealing with the fact that someone touched him with a faith touch. And the woman comes out of hiding. And Jesus looks at her and says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Now can, can you see Jairus being hopeful? Because he had asked Jesus, come lay hands on my daughter so that she can get well and live. There's a woman who touches Jesus with the faith touch and the Bible says that she was made well or whole. It's the same thing that Jairus is asking of Jesus. So, so, so can you see the hope? Because he's right there with Jesus when this happens. And so if Jesus could heal this woman and make her whole, then I, I'm hopeful that he can heal my daughter and make her whole, make her well. And the Bible says while Jesus was still speaking, a delegation comes from Jairus' house and says to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Hope is lost. It's too late. Maybe if we had not have had this interruption on the way, maybe Jesus would have made it in time. But it's too late. Hospice has pronounced her dead. The funeral home has been contacted. Family and friends are already showing up at the house. Don't bother Jesus anymore. The Bible says that Jesus overheard what they said to Jairus. Yeah. That word overheard in verse number 36 has three meanings, all of which apply to this situation. The, the first meaning means uh, to overhear something not intended for your ears. And so they aren't talking to Jesus. They're talking to Jairus when they say, your daughter has died, but Jesus overhears it. Yeah. The second meaning is to pay no attention to or to ignore. And the third meaning 
is to refuse to listen to or to discount the truth of something. Jesus knows they aren't talking to him. And though he hears it, Jesus does not pay any attention to it. And though they speak truth about the little girl, she really is dead. Jesus refuses to listen because he knows that he not only has the power to heal, he also has the power to raise. And so Jesus speaks a powerful word to Jairus. Don't be afraid, only believe. Jairus, I, I know there's this feeling that's bubbling up in you. There is this fear that is arising within you since you've just gotten the news that your baby girl, your precious daughter has died. And whatever that feeling is, I want you to replace that fear with faith. Don't be afraid, only believe as that feeling is rising up in you, Jairus. I need you to banish that feeling. Believe in the power of Jesus. Believe in the words of Jesus and keep on believing every step of the way. Jesus commands Jairus to have a continued, sustained faith. You came to Jesus because you believed he could heal. Continue to believe even in the presence of death. Jairus, you just saw what I did for this lady with the hemorrhage of blood for 12 years and she didn't even ask me to help her, she just touched me. And you had enough faith, Jairus, to come to me when your daughter was sick. Don't stop believing now that things are worse than when you first came to me. Uh, you, you probably don't know this, Jairus, but, but not only have I healed the sick before, I've actually raised the dead before. Because just the other day, I was going into a city called Nain. And, and as I was going to the city, they were bringing a dead man out of the city, getting ready to take him to the cemetery and he was the only son of a widow woman and when I met that funeral procession I told them to stop and I touched the casket and when I touched the casket I told the young man to get up and he got up and I gave him back to his mother Jairus you might not realize it but not only can I heal the sick I can also raise the dead so don't be afraid only believe That's a word that we need today. Don't be afraid. Only believe. I know you have received some bad news, but don't be afraid. Only believe. I know that there are wars and rumors of wars all around us, but don't be afraid. Only believe. I know that your loved one who died was your rock, but don't be afraid. Only believe. I know that they keep talking about inflation and, and prices have increased all around us and the price of gas goes up and then it comes back down. But when it comes down, down. It doesn't come down all the way to the place where it was before it went up. But don't be afraid. Only believe. Jesus walks with you even in your most difficult hour. He does, he does not stop walking with you just because things went from bad to worse. He has a word of comfort even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to be afraid of the problem when you walk with the problem solver. Even if the problem gets worse from when you first prayed about it, God can still fix it. He still heals. He still saves. He still strengthens. He still restores. He still delivers. And as they're going to the house, Jesus prevents the crowd from following them. He takes with him Peter, James, and John. 
And when they get to the house, they hear the sound of mourning. You get this picture in your head. They are walking to the house, Jairus and Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And, and word has spread throughout their community that Jairus' daughter has died. And people have come to support the family, to sit with the family, and to mourn with the family. And during the time of Jesus, there were also professional mourners who would come and cry too. And so as Jairus and Jesus Peter, James, and John are approaching the house. There's this loud wailing. There's this loud weeping. Everybody is crying. And Jairus knows that all of the noise that he is hearing is because his daughter is dead. But he also knows that Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. So he's hearing all this crying. Don't be afraid, only believe. He walks into the house. Don't be afraid. Only believe. He looks at his wife and hears her moaning. Don't be afraid. Only believe. He walks into the room where his dead daughter lies. Don't be afraid. Only believe. He looks at his daughter's lifeless body for the first time. Don't be afraid. Only believe. He hears people laughing when Jesus says she ain't dead. She's just asleep. Don't be afraid. Only believe. People laugh at the suggestion that she is just asleep because they know she's dead. What they don't know is that for Jesus, raising someone from the dead is just as easy as rousing someone from their slumber. It's been suggested that Jesus kicked the people out of the house, out of the room, because he didn't need people without faith around him while he was doing his work. I want to suggest a couple of other reasons. One is found right there in the text, because after Jesus does this miracle, he tells them, now don't you tell anybody about this. This was meant to be a private moment with Jesus. Jesus knew that his ministry was not about raising the dead. He had a message to proclaim. So can you imagine all of the people who would come to Jesus once they found out he knew how to raise the dead? The miracles were secondary to and confirmation of the message. Not everything that God does in your life is meant to be public, published, or posted. Some stuff ought to stay between you and Jesus. Another reason that Jesus would have put the extra people out is this. They came to mourn with the family. But if ain't nobody dead, then mourners are unnecessary. And so to the professional mourners, Jesus is saying your services are no longer needed because a resurrection is about to take place. Won't be anybody to cry over right now. You can go on about your business and go help somebody else. Jesus, Jairus, his wife, Peter, James, and John enter where the little girl is. And Jesus takes the child by the hand and says, Talitha kumi, which is Aramaic. It means little girl, arise. 
He touches a dead body, making himself ceremonially unclean. I'm so glad Jesus doesn't have a problem touching that which is unclean. I'm glad that in our uncleanliness, Jesus says, I'll touch you. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. I'm not too big. I'm not too up uppity. I'm willing to touch you. I'm willing to get my hands dirty so I can raise you up. Girl who was dead, she gets up, she walks, and Jesus tells her parents, give us something to eat. Jesus shows Jairus that his original request was fully fulfilled. What did Jairus ask for? Lord, let my daughter get well and live. And that's just what happened. His daughter was alive and well. Well enough to get up. Well enough to walk. Well enough to eat. As I take my seat, I want you to know that too late is never too late for Jesus. He can give life to what's dead. Too late is never too late for Jesus. He can bring a couple back together after they divorce because too late is never too late for Jesus. He can raise a friendship that you are written off as dead years ago because too late is never too late for Jesus. He can bring siblings back together who haven't spoken in decades because too late is never too late for Jesus. He can touch the hearts of those who you never thought were over obey the gospel and they can be baptized in the watery grave of baptism because too late is never too late for Jesus. He can give alternatives to an alternative lifestyle because too late is never too late for Jesus. He can give the alcoholic sobriety and he can keep the addict clean and one day all of the dead who die in the Lord will rise and when they rise they will be alive and well well enough to eat from the tree of life well enough to gather around the throne of God Whether well enough to sing a new song worthy is the lamb I'm so glad that Jesus responds to faith and too late is never too late for Jesus and so if you're here and you're not part of the body of Christ, it's not too late. If you believe Jesus to be the Son of God, repent of your sins. And you can be baptized this evening for the forgiveness of your sins. You'll receive God's Holy Spirit and you'll be added to the body of Christ. Will you come to Jesus as we stand and as we sing? Everybody ought to hold to his hand, to God's son, changing hand. Oh, 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 to his hand, to, to God's son, changing hand. Oh, and just build your hopes on things in turn. Oh, well, and just hold. Sun changing and well you know the time is filled with swift transition well and not of earth unmoved can stand and just build your hopes on things if Well, and just hold to God's son, changing and well, now when the journey gets long, just hold to his hand, hold on to God's son, changing and well, hold to his hand, to God's son, changing Oh, 
things eternal well and just hold to God's unchanging hand. Man, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah for the Lamb. What an outstanding job on tonight. Brother Lamont Ross, you did an outstanding job on tonight. We are grateful and thankful to God for your presentation of God's word. As uh, Brother Dooling used to say, if I had three words, I would say, my, my, my. And, but because I'm not Brother Doolin and I'm an urban seamster, I'm going to say your message was clear, it was coherent, and it was comprehensive. And it certainly brought glory to Jesus Christ. And so we want to thank you for an outstanding job. And the Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ is blessed to have him in the pulpit. Uh, every Sunday preaching outstanding sermons like the one we heard on tonight and uh, not only Marcellus Avenue but our entire city, the city of Dallas and our brotherhood is uh, just uh, all to better, uh, all together, together better and stronger because we have ministers uh, like you preaching God's word. I have a few announcements that I like to rehearse into your hearing. I don't want to be too long. I I'm praying that we can get out of here by 8 o'clock, but it won't be me if we go over to be the person coming behind me, amen? <laughs> but I do want to just leave him just a little time. Again, we want to welcome you on behalf of our board and our um, faculty, our staff, and our student body to our 86th annual uh, lectureship with the theme, A Bridge Over Troubled Waters. And we've gotten off the day um, um, with an amazing start. Uh, first of all, we heard uh, Brother Daryl Bowdry. If you were not here on this morning, uh, I've just heard just amazing things about his sermon. I can't wait to get back over to my little apartment and listen to uh, his, his uh, sermon from this morning. He did an outstanding job. And then this afternoon, uh, Brother Dr. Uh, Dwayne Renro out of the Reseda Church of Christ in Reseda, California, preached, uh, was our Founders Day pre uh, speaker, and he did an amazing job, just, uh, just a brilliant theologian and uh, uh, gospel preacher, and uh, you got to go back and listen to that. And then we were here in the flesh to hear uh, uh, Brother Lamont Ross. So we've just gotten off to an amazing start with dynamic preaching and we're just praying to God that each preacher uh, just continues to do what um, these preachers have already done. Just preach the gospel with passion, with clarity and uh, just preach in such a way that a blind man can see it and a fool can understand it. But more than that, that God always receives the honor and the glory. Uh, here are the announcements. Tomorrow we will uh, begin with breakfast at 8 a.m. And so if you're an early riser, you can join us for, for breakfast in the dining hall. You will receive a blue meal ticket when you check in for registration. And you can choose to use it for breakfast or lunch. So you can use it for either or not for both and. And then without a ticket, it will be $10 to eat in the dining hall. And I want to tell you, Mr. Morrow and his staff can show enough cook. I mean, it's mmm -hmm good. And you don't want to miss it. And uh, if you like me, you need to gain a couple of pounds. You need to get down there in the morning. If you like I was three weeks ago, you need to stay out of the dining hall. Because, you know, I was gaining a little bit too much weight. So uh, Mr. Morrow is doing an outstanding job, and we thank God for him. But we, we want to make sure if you've taken medication or if you, like I am, breakfast is your favorite meal, uh, please join us in the dining hall tomorrow morning at 8. And that will be from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. The women will begin the Ladies' Day program also tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., uh, at the West End Church of Christ. And so we're excited about that program. 
And if you need more information about that uh, program, we are asking you to please see Jarlin Dansby Fox. I'm sure she, she's here tonight. Good to see you, Jarlin. And uh, I'm sure she's put together an amazing program. And uh, I hope to get over there and stick my head in the door and say hello to you ladies, Jarlin. But I, I saw in the program that you have some incredible women on the program. And I know that they are going to show up and they are fired up and we're going to have an outstanding uh, Ladies Day program. And so we want to, once again, thank Sister Jarlin Dansby Fox for the incredible work she's done each and every year working with the Ladies Day program. Registration will also be opening at 7.45 a.m. until the start of the session at 8.30 a.m. Here in the Evans Building, they will open back up after the morning session. Located right outside of uh, here in the uh, hallway, um, you can register at the table outside the doors uh, of this building. We have a schedule at a glance available to everyone at the registration table, and you will be able to pick up your program book and additional promotional items at the end of the afternoon session on tomorrow. We will kick off our morning session at 8.30 a.m. here in this Evans building, and we'll have a ministerial student. We have an outstanding ministerial student preaching tomorrow morning in the person of Brother Christopher Enard. And I'm here to tell you, he is an incredible preacher. He can preach God's word, and we are so proud of him. Once he graduates from Southwestern Christian College, he'll be moving in January to Florida. And he'll be uh, working as a youth minister under Brother Charlie McClendon in Florida. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And we get, uh, we get calls all the time. Uh, congregations are looking for ministers of, of the gospel. And I know I've talked to about 25 ministers of the gospel. And many of us in the next five to ten years will be stepping away from the pulpit full time. And we'll be turning our pulpits over to uh, young men, and we are hoping that they will matriculate here at Southwestern first to get training here, and then we're going to partner with some of our senior ministers and, and elders throughout our uh, brotherhood, and we're going to train them, equip and prepare them to go into these congregations and be uh, not just successful, and successful is you can preach well, but being effective means that you are not trying to grow memberships, but you are growing people and you are changing lives. And so we want to do everything we can at Southwestern Christian College to partner with our churches throughout our brotherhood to equip uh, young men to preach the gospel and young women to serve in different capacities in the church. And so we are excited about uh, these young men who are being trained and so come tomorrow and hear uh, what Southwestern is doing in the minister of your students like Christopher Enor. One of the minister uh, uh, students, uh, Brother Bird uh, Pray, uh, he's an he's a incredible preacher himself. And so we happen to have him and there are many, many other young men who are uh, studying ministry here and we, we thank God for them. Then we will begin our first lecture series with a theme the hybrid church, and we'll have two uh, uh, speakers who will present papers. So what we're trying to do as a college, we are trying to get back into lectures. So it is, in fact, a lectureship and not just a preach-a-thon. And although we have incredible preachers and they can preach, but we also have some incredible thinkers, and uh, they can write their literary and they can give you information that you can take uh, from here back to your local congregation and use them to facilitate in your Bible studies, share with your, your leadership, and, uh, and then you guys can, can uh, make uh, all of those ideas that you've uh, learned from Southwestern's lectureship, uh, implement them at your church. So we're going to have two lectures on the hybrid church, and this lecture, these two lectures will help you to stay connected to your members, especially coming off of the pandemic. To some extent, we are still in it. I think we're going to be looking at the pandemic the way we look at the flu. We're gonna to have to just get shots 
uh, every year, just like with the flu. And we, we're gonna have to do that, I believe, with this uh, COVID-19 um, uh, virus as well. So, but we wanna help you to stay connected with your members. A lot of us, half of our members haven't returned to worship with us. They're watching online because of fear or just because they've, they've grown, uh, they've gotten comfortable watching a church in their pajamas. But uh, while they are, we are trying to get them to come back to worship, uh, we want uh, to help you to find ways, creative ways to stay connected to them. Nothing will ever substitute from being right in the worship experience, but while we are trying to get them back, you'll be able to stay connected. So we're excited about that track. Then we will have our afternoon speaker, uh, Brother Brady. He will be our afternoon speaking speaker before we break for lunch. Then we'll at noon, we'll break for lunch. Please feel free to tour our campus and see all of the amazing renovations. As you can see in here, we've painted uh, the, uh, inside of the chapel. We've uh, installed new carpet inside of the chapel, the Ben Foster Jr. Chapel. Uh, outside in the hallway, so this is just one space we've renovated. We have a new bookstore, so if you want to buy a paraphernalia, a t-shirt, or a sweater, or a jacket, you can go down to the bookstore. Brother uh, Philip Wade is here tonight. You can talk to him tonight, or you can see him tomorrow. We have some, some very, very nice uh, items that we want to encourage you to pick, pick up so we can uh, show our uh, school spirit and show solidarity so uh, we got mannequins and everything so you can either buy some off of one of the mannequins or you can volunteer to be a mannequin but 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 please stop by the bookstore uh, on tomorrow as you saw today we renovated the gymnasium it has been painted we have a new sound system that uh, Dr. Winrow almost blew out uh, before today we had a sound system inside of the gymnasium that had 800 watts. He preached today with a system that has 4,000 watts. But the system inside of the auditorium, which is being renovated, it has 10,000 watts. So it's two and a half times more powerful than what you guys heard. So not only are we renovating, uh, let me just say this about the renovations in the uh, auditorium. We have some seats available. Uh, you think these seats are nice, just think about these seats bumped up by five, times five. And, and think about them uh, having beautiful stain. Uh, we will have uh, placards with your name in memory of a loved one or your name. You can purchase the first 10 rolls of premium seats. Those seats are $1,000 each, and we're almost running out of those premium seats, uh, in fact, one of our board members, Dr. Helen Curtis, she, she wanted to make sure she was on one of those front rows, and so she, she brought her check. And here's someone who raises money for Southwestern week in and week out, and she's still finding ways to give. And she's a retired educator in Fort Worth, but she's still giving to several programs. So we want to thank Dr. Curtis. We want to thank our board members. We're going to thank all of you, but we want you, if you want to have your name play, uh, uh, somewhere permanent in a very, very nice space, and I'm telling you, it's probably going to be the, one of the nicest spaces on the campus, you want to see uh, the business office or see Deborah Wade to purchase one of those seats. And so. Uh, I think I have 10 seats, Dr. Dansby has 10, several other people have multiple seats, and so we're asking you to stop by the auditorium, see Brother Drew uh, uh, Johnson, he'll take you on a tour. If I'm available, I'll be happy to show you around, but almost, almost every building on the campus has been touched, has been renovated. New furniture in the boys' dorm, in the girls' dorm, uh, we are doing the recreational center. We have the sub. It has been open. The administration building has been renovated. We're just all over the campus. No one can ever say that they are, they are ashamed to bring some, well, someone to the campus of Southwestern Christian College because it is a beautiful campus. And I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. And I'm not doing a comparative analysis. We're not competing uh, with other colleges. We are competing with the excellent God, 
has set for us. He wants us to do all things with excellence. And so we're just trying to be obedient and we want to give you an opportunity to see some of the money you've been donating uh, to the college so you can see some of the renovations. And then the afternoon session will be at 1.30 with an amazing panel to discuss um, the, the two papers that will be presented. That will be facilitated by Brother Randall Tucker, Tucker out of uh, Houston, Texas. And our very own Lamont Ross who preached tonight will be a part of that panel. Uh, Brother uh, Donald Bernal, Bernal Holly, Brother Sam Bailey, and Brother Brady will also uh, sit on that panel and you can put questions to the presenters or one of the panelists and we'll, we'll chop it up that, during that afternoon session. Then we'll break for the, for the afternoon and come back at 7 p.m. for our evening session. And we'll have preaching Brother Willie B. Williams and no, none other than Brother Dr. Warren Blakeney. And those will be our two evening speakers. And we look forward to seeing all of you back here tomorrow morning. These are all of the announcements that I have. I'm going to now uh, turn the program back over to the very capable hands. Is Brother Pew in here? Oh, he's right over here, right next to me. Come on, Brother Pew, and try not to go past 8 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Pew. God bless you. All right, we want to um, see if there are any who need to be served the Lord's Supper. We want to give you display love one toward another. Father, we pray over this bread and this cup that represents your son's body and his blood. And Father, we thank you that he was willing to take on a load that wasn't meant for him. He took licks that were meant for us. He stood in our stead and took our place. Father, help us to always be mindful of the love that drove him to Calvary. And God, we also rejoice in the fact that we serve a risen Savior. Amen. And Father, we ask, O oh God, that you would bless those that will partake uh, of these elements at this time. Help us to always do it in a manner that's pleasing to you. We thank you. We honor you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. Oh, you don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the fear Story, and that's why I love him. I love him. I, I really love the Lord. Say it again. I really love the Lord. Say I, I really love, I love. So 
glory and that's why I love him oh I love him I really love the And as always, we want to always give you the opportunity to give. And uh, we selected those words on purpose because it is always an opportunity to give. For we know the Bible tells us that it is better to give than to receive. And uh, if you know uh, God like we know God, we know that you can't be God-given. And uh, if you haven't found out yet, I dare you to try it you'll find out that you cannot be God-given. So what we'll do is, uh, as we prepare to close out uh, and, and pray, there will be baskets in the back as you exit out the door, and you can uh, give at that time if you desire to do so. If there are no other announcements, then we'll stand, and we'll close out our time in a word of prayer. You don't know what he's done for me. God, he gave me the victory. Oh, and that's why I love him. That's why I love him. Oh, I. with us as we pray to our God we bow at this time God we thank you for all that you've done we thank you for who you are oh God we thank you for the opportunity to know you God we thank you for your word that came forth and we thank you for your man servant brother Ross who has blessed our hearts this evening God helping us and challenging us father God to always believe even when the circumstances seem to be insurmountable God we want to always believe and trust in you knowing that you can do anything but fail. God, we thank you for Southwestern Christian College. We thank you for our president, oh God. We thank you for the board, for the faculty, for the staff, for the administration. God, we ask that you would continue to keep your hand upon this great institution. And Father, we ask that you would bless each of those who has it in their heart to give, Father God. We know that you are a God who always gives first, and so any giving that we do is in response to what you've already done for us. So God, as we go, as we prepare to leave this place, we ask that we might always uh, keep our minds on you. Help us to say a kind word, to do a kind deed toward one another. In order to let your light in us shine, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen.